So we're now in a series on the Black-Scholes model and today we're actually going to derive the Black-Scholes pricing equation for a financial derivative. But first let's review, review what we did last time. So last time we thought about how the underlying or any financial asset evolves from time small t, which is today, to time large t, which is some point in the future. And we said if we're interested in the price at time t, then the asset follows this formula, right? So in other words, it's dependent on the price of the asset today, which I call S small t, and dependent on the return of the asset, dependent on the variance of the asset, and dependent on Brownian motion. And we also talked about the, the dynamics of the asset. So how does the price of the asset change during the process? How does the price of the asset change from time t in when time only changes by a little bit. And this is the process that we formulated. We said that the change in the asset is given by the return scaled by the change in time and the variance scaled by a change in the Brownian motion. So in other words, we have answered questions about the underlying or the financial asset that is the underlying for derivative. And in the Black-Scholes model, we're interested in actually not pricing the asset itself, but a derivative of the asset. So a function, a payoff function dependent on the asset. And if we want to start pricing anything, I basically told you in a previous video that there are two approaches to this. There's risky pricing and risk neutral pricing. And we're going to take the approach of risk neutral pricing and in risk neutral pricing the price of any asset at time small t which is today is given by the risk neutral expectation of the payoffs of the asset divided by the risk free rate and in continuous time the risk free rate is the defined as the exponential function to the power of the annual return scaled by time. So if the annual risk-free rate is 5%, then the, the, the risk-free rate over half a year, so over the time period of one half, would be e to the power of 2.5%, which is given by 1.025. Okay, just to give you an example. So if we plug in our definition for the risk-free rate, we get that our price at time t is given by the risk-neutral expectation of the payoffs divided by the risk-free rate. Okay, so now that we have this, we need to think about the risk-neutral expectation of the payoff. So we have a financial derivative and so we can simply write that we're looking for the risk neutral expectation of some function of our underlying. And we actually have a formula for what the underlying is worth at time large t. And I'll just plug in our formula that we have derived in the pre previous video. So we said that our underlying at time t is worth mu minus a half sigma squared t minus t plus sigma squared change in the Brownian motion, All right? I'm just plugging in the formula from here that we have derived in the last video. So let's think about what an expectation is. Let's try to expand this expectation operator. And in order to expand on the expectation operator, we need to think about the distribution of this thing. And if we look at this, then all of the parameters are given. The only random component here is Brownian motion. And I told you that Brownian motion is distributed normally with mean zero and the variance is given by the distance in time. So now I will use a small mathematical trick. If you have a normal random variable with mean zero and standard deviation variance one, then you can scale it. So if I multiply this by the square root of t large t minus small t, I get a normally distributed variable with mean zero and variance t minus t. This also 
works with any, any number. So I could multiply on standard normal random variable with square root of three and I'll get a normal random variable with mean zero and variance of three. Okay, this is just a um, property of the standard normal distribution. And this is what I'll actually do here. So I told you that the Brownian motion is distributed with the normal distribution of zero t minus t. And I'll simplify this a bit. I'll add here a standard normal random variable and I'll multiply with t minus t. So y is distributed as a standard normal distribution, okay? So what do we have? We actually have the expectation of a normal random variable. And here is the probability density function of a normal random variable. So if we take the expectation, the expectation is defined as just taking the integral of the probability distribution function times the value of the random variable. This is the definition of an expectation. So let's now use this formula for a st if the probability density function is given by a normally distributed random variable. So what we want is the integral from minus infinity to infinity. And the value of our payoff is given by the derivative function, which is dependent on the underlying. So this is our x. And then we need the probability density function. And as our variable here is distributed as a standard normal random variable, our sigma here is one and our expectation is zero. So I can just plug in times one divided by square root two pi times epsilon minus a half y, y minus zero divided by one squared, which is nothing else than just y and I integrate over y. That's just how I've called the random variable, okay? So let me, so let's look at this equation together. So what did I do? I said the price of a derivative is given by the risk neutral expectation of the payoffs divided by the risk free rate. And we're trying to understand what the risk neutral expectation is. And then as I said, the, we need the risk neutral expectation of the payoffs and the payoff of a derivative is given by the function, by a function dependent on the asset value. And now I've taken the normal definition for an expected value, right? But that's not correct because we're not looking for a normal expected value. We're looking for a risk neutral expected value. And so we need to talk about something that is called Gersonov theory. Remember how we have modeled the underlying asset. We have modeled the underlying asset like this, right? We said that the underlying asset changes depend on the risky return of the underlying asset and the variance of the underlying asset. So Gersonov theorem tells us that we can take the normal expectation of this guy and, but if we want to take the risk neutral expectation, then we take the normal expectation, but change the mu for the, the risky rate for the risk free rate. dst divided by st is given by r dt plus sigma dzt, right? So we can take a normal expectation, but we just need to swap the risky rate for the risk free rate. So this is our risk neutral expectation and this is our normal expectation. And Gersonov actually proved this and this is a very advanced proof that I don't want to get into. Just remember, if you take a normal expectation, you use the process for the underlying asset where you use the risky rate, and if you take the risk neutral expectation, you use the process for the underlying asset, but using the risky rate. So in other words, what do we need to do in our formula? Since we're looking for the risk neutral expectation, we cannot look at our asset with respect to the risky rate, but we need to swap the risky rate with the risk free rate. And believe it or not, 
what we've just derived is the Black-Scholes pricing equation. This is it. And if you give me the derivative function, which can be any function, then we can just need to figure out this integral and we have the price for an asset, right? So if I have, if my derivative pays off the square of the asset value at time t, I need to swap this for the square function and evaluate this integral. And I know that this now seems kind of complex and I, we've talked about a lot of numbers, a lot of theorems. So in the next videos, I will show you how to actually evaluate this integral and how to obtain the price for a specific derivative, namely a call option.